Welcome to Fade the Public. This is your host, Leo Herrera, on a mission to spread the truth. Let's work. Yo, it's go time, show time, never back in downtime. One shot, yo, make it count, yo. Today, I have Pedro Gomez, very close friend of mine that I've met really in the beginning of my life. <laughs> I've known you forever, dude, and such a wonderful story. Um, Pedro, thanks for coming in here, man. I really appreciate you uh, showing up. I appreciate your brother. Much love. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So let's get started with, with kind of just how we met and uh, like how everything unfolded. So Pedro's been a member here since what? Uh, 2001 yeah i was i was five or six years old and you were like zero an infant i was zero yeah. <laughs> i was born oh <laughs> two <laughs> so uh yeah and we we kind of just met at a young age like just playing here remember the inner clubs at doral yeah we just play you've always been such a great guy to me um i think you're like six years older than me and i've always seen you as someone that i can like you know rely on to just give me good words of inspiration because you're just such a positive guy. Um, that means a lot, bro. No, nah, thank you. Uh, and yeah, we played, uh, well, I played middle school, but you played high school. We played in a high school team at Belen. Uh, I think it was for just a year or two years. We were in the same school, probably one or one or two. Yeah. Yeah. But I always remember you and, and another friend, uh, Andrew Seacole, was like, we're the only two guys that, like, I felt like, you know, I was a sixth grader on the team, seventh grader on the team. Uh, you could have easily just been like, who's this little kid, like, trying to show up and just play golf and beat everybody. But, like, you guys were so nice to me. And I, I felt like I had a place in the team. And it was mostly because of you, like, being so such a compassionate guy and, you know, understanding me. And I just want to say, I appreciate that. I, I really do. It helped me a lot um, just going through that phase. But um, I, I want to dive a, a little deep into, like, you know, your story. Um, you know, you, you played high school golf at Belen, and you told me around your junior year and senior year of high school, like, you were playing super well. Um, but then you, you hit kind of a setback with your injury. Um, you had, like, a wrist, wrist injury. You went to school and just nothing really kind of went your way, like physically. You were kind of, you felt like you were limited by your injuries. And, and talk us through kind of like, you know, how you felt like emotionally during those times and, and uh, what you kind of tried to learn from it as you went on. Sure. Um, I want to mute the notifications on here because my wrist is vibrating. <laughs> All right, so uh, the injury on my wrist. Yeah, all right. So I had finally gotten uh, to a level of play that was reflective of the hours I put in. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I was on, I was, I was, practicing on the range or on the course just the entire most most of the day you were a grinder bro yeah. i remember yeah every day um but yeah so I, I started performing well towards the end of my junior career um and i got the opportunity to play in college i the injury was on my right wrist um, and it actually happened the summer of like graduation, uh, high school graduation. Yeah. So before I even got to campus uh, on college, so like I, I, I arrived and I, I couldn't, couldn't play, um, which, you know, that's the, the primary reason I went, uh, there. I mean, it was the highest offer and, um, so the injury started probably May or June of senior year. Um, and I was playing through it. I 
and I I got away with it. I thought it was just just nothing. Yeah, like just nothing like uh, here and there. Yeah, yeah, like like I practice a lot. It's normal. Yeah, you know whatever. Um, I played the SFPGA Championship. Um, shot shot one over total, finished third. While in pain with my wrist, uh, then I went to go play the next event, and I was playing fine, but it was, it it just the pain was too much. Next level, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, it's probably intelligent to yeah. get out of here. So you got to college after that, and yeah. that first year, you kind of just sat out, and then you told me you you played right. You, you tried to play like right after you healed from the injury and just got you got hurt again yeah i got to college uh couldn't play um which was disheartening um came back to miami uh to see my my doctors uh we got we got mris done x-rays uh it's it looked like it healed so they said i could start start practicing start start playing um probably went on the course a little too quickly probably should have just practiced s- uh, slower uh more intelligently yeah um and eased into it but uh i, I told the coach i was ready and he believed me <laughs> and um it played that that event and, and tore, tore it again so and how did how were you feeling there like did you feel like just like killed after that it was like wow like i just went through all this and then played my first event got injured like what was going on in in your mind yeah definitely deflated um i at that point in time i i started questioning why i was there anymore yeah so and did that kind of experience like make you start to to see like a different area of your life to focus on where it's like okay like golf had its turn now it's time to kind of turn the page and see something else because you know like this is just not working for me actually that's exactly what happened i i didn't think about it that way but that's exactly what happened yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all played out like that I guess. leo knows me better than i know me <laughs> yeah yeah so, um yeah i i went back home uh, to Miami and I, I started, you know, my wrist was still torn. So I, I started looking into other interests of mine while my wrist was torn. Um, and what I did was I auditioned for the theater program in FIU, um, as an actor uh, I memorized a uh, monologue. Was it a monologue? I'm not sure if it was if it was dialogue. And I, they put someone in there for me. I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> I forget what it was. But uh, I performed. I got in. Um, yeah, just so you succeeded in that, and like, you were able to do your acting, and yeah. you were also doing modeling as well. And it's like. You fi- did you feel like that there, like, y- your life kind of took, like, a turning point? I was like, okay, like, now I'm, like, you know, doing something that's cool. Like, it, it kind of filling in your heart where it's, like, where it wasn't there for golf. Right. I found something new that I was, I was, I was pretty good at. Yeah, I got in. Yeah. I'm, I don't want to say that, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, no, yeah. of course. Um so and and after that i mean i want to go into the story of like you were diagnosed uh with Mm -hmm. cancer uh last year in april correct and i I want i want people to uh, really understand like kind of your story about that like how how did you feel when you first got the news that that you you had cancer did you kind of expect it coming by the way you were feeling um or you know what was it like just hearing about it first time sure um i'm gonna f- finish up that last 
like before this? Yeah, yeah finish it up. Sorry. I no, that's fine. I I was in theater for a little bit, but I I ended up switching to communications and I did pre med as well. <laughs> oh wow! I did. I did, yeah. I was just testing stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so that's where I ended up finishing college. Um, so yeah, last year. Was it last year? Yeah. Uh, in January, late January, about about the twentieth, we did a procedure. I wasn't I wasn't doing well uh, at, the, at this point for several months. Uh, since mid twenty twenty, I was my body was not okay. Um, we finally, I had a condition. Since I was uh, younger, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, um, in my large intestine, um, and through that, the the risk of developing that was was higher than a normal person. Um, but the symptoms are the same, right? Um, so they biopsy you um, when you're diagnosed with this condition um, once or twice a year uh, for the rest of your life just to monitor the progression of the disease and whether or not you have uh, cancer cells or precancerous cells. Um, and so like I was saying in 2020, uh, my health had declined. So the first thing my doctors did was just increase the dosage of my medication that I'd been on, you know, my, my whole life. Um, that didn't work. So then they put me on, on prednisone, which is something we regularly do as well when I don't respond to medication. Prednisone is a, uh, a steroid, but it's not a bodybuilding steroid. It's, it <laughs> I mean, I, I'd be a little, uh, I mean, you look pretty, you look pretty yeah. jacked, so. I wouldn't no. be surprised if it's steroid. <laughs> it's, it's a corticosteroid. Yeah. So it, it reduces inflammation in the body. Nice. Um, but the cost is it, 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 uh, it reduces inflammation in the body by severing your immune system, basically, which is why they don't put you on that for prolonged periods of time. Um, and that was also a fantastic time to be on prednisone. In 2020. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. N yeah. So when that didn't work, he referred me to a, a different doctor at at uh, the, the hospital I ended up going to. And th through the biopsy and the procedure, uh, yeah, it was early, thankfully, but she found... Uh, not only cancerous growths um, in my large intestine, um, but she biopsied what looked like healthy tissue. Um, and when the results came back, it wasn't healthy tissue. It was the entire organ was either cancerous already or precancerous. Wow. So we had to remove all of it. And I'm guessing you you were pretty deflated at that point where it's like you were like, wow, like, I can't believe this just happened to me. I don't know. Like, kind of what was going on in your <laughs> mind there? Um, yeah. Um, you know, when you, since I had that, illness as uh since i was a child i always knew it was possible to to get there um obviously uh not so young uh, yeah my doctor was surprised i was surprised everyone was surprised yeah well and you're such you're such a strong fighter bro i i, I was remember always texting you like Kind of during the whole procedure and like during the whole process, I was praying for you. I was really trying to send you as many good vibes. I remember we played around the golf like a couple of days before it all started. 
and i was sending you all the best wishes bro i really wanted you to go through this like and i mean obviously when somebody goes through something like that it's almost like they don't like die physically but almost something in you dies and, and you're reborn as a new person i have to i mean there's many reasons to believe that you are a completely different person now than you were before this started and during this procedure what has been like the strongest things that you've you've learned after this whole whole process of uh of what you went through who are you now that's different than who you were before um absolutely not the same person um i think what i would say is my priorities in life shifted from work from business being high up there if not number one to people being number one you know your your friends your family loved ones um just spending time with people um that became that became the most important thing to me at least on my priority list like, yeah yeah and do you feel like that came as a byproduct of like how grateful you were of just like being alive just like wow like i went through that and i did this and i'm just so grateful to be here right now that i have nothing to complain about like i just went through a lot nothing can make me go through what i just went through so you just feel like your your heart expanded to like really just have unconditional love for anyone and anything yeah um is it easier to understand people i don't judge people anymore definitely definitely as uh, if that's what you mean by understand people yeah um everyone's going through their own thing you might not know about it you know um What was what was the, your question? <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, kind of like, um, you know, how did you? I really wanted to know how you came out as as a different person from this yeah. in the beginning, where it's like, okay, you you're a lot more compassionate with people, and like now, like you're you're just so grateful to be here now that like I guess I was saying like it just came from your gratitude right this is a one take show we don't <laughs> we don't pause things we don't edit things yeah uh, <laughs> uh, yeah um i've i've posted a, f a few times um on my profile like uh like i posted a picture of myself with my surgeon and i i was like you know a year ago today was this and so I, I, f I feel an immense like uh, f feeling of gratitude. Um, so yeah, just just to be able to, because we haven't told people this, like the listeners in the podcast, in the One Take Show podcast, <laughs> but <laughs> um, um, it was three surgeries. Um, so after each surgery, uh, you know, I, I couldn't walk. Um, I was in the hospital for at least a week. There was one, there was one surgery where I was there over two weeks. Um, so when you, when, when your body is just not able to do anything and then you get past that, you just have a whole new appreciation for everything in life. You know, I, um, waking up from surgery, I could not get out of the, out of the, the bed, the, the hospital bed. Yeah. 
um, I needed a nurse to help me with everything yeah. at all times. Um, That's amazing. And now yeah. you just finished a cardio workout. Right. So it's like, yeah. That's amazing. I think that's so inspirational. Like, honestly, I'm inspired by your story so much. And how has like this new approach of like just immense gratitude and immense like love and, and just, you know, overall compassion for life. How is this like, you know, what's next for Pedro is what I'm, I'm just trying to ask. Like, are we going to see something where, you know, are you, do you feel like you're a lot more self motivated for life now that it's like, do you feel a lot more resilient after what you went through? Like what kind of like values do you feel like you have now other than this, this gratitude and immense like compassion for people, like for yourself and for like what you want to do in life? It's like, do you feel like, okay, I went through this now I can do anything kind of mentality. Right. It's not, I've always been good at, having the discipline to do things but now like whether you're tired whether you're you know I, i've never really needed motivation is what i'm saying yeah. like i just developed discipline through my life but after this um it's more than that it's i'm able to go get a workout so like I'm grateful that I have that opportunity, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna capitalize on that and I'm gonna do it, you know. Um, I love that, yeah. and that's amazing. And I kind of want to transfer now to like this other new, new topic, and it's about mindfulness. We've had many discussions about this, and, and I know you like to study a lot about. You, know, you read this book, Power of Now, by uh, Edgar Tolley. Yeah. And you were telling me you've learned a lot from that, and something that I kind of like talking about too. Um, and I'm sure like before you've had a lot of uh, alone time, I would say, or at least time where you can't really do much. So you kind of sitting there, but with yourself, what are the things that like, did you apply like mindfulness to those certain situations or, you know, what have you learned from, from what you've been learning? How did you apply it to your like, own experiences and times you went through? You know, definitely um, having read that book prior to going through this was a coincidence, but an awesome coincidence. It all, everything happens yeah. for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, definitely, because, you know, through recovery, there's just so much you want to do, but you just can't. Yeah. Right. Um, so you you need to have the patience and you need to have the you need to be able to to know that you need to be able to be with yourself right and, and just like just it, be, be with present yourself. yeah and the ability to do that took away a lot of uh, what would have probably been anxiety um, to to someone who hadn't um, read or studied these topics before. Um, learning to be still, yeah. learning to, to observe your thoughts, learning to be patient. And I'm sure, I mean, through this whole process, you had a lot of negative thoughts like you know of, of possible outcomes that aren't favorable favorable to, to what was going to happen so i'm sure this approach to mindfulness was like crucial for you to get through what you went through like i can just see it being a tool that you you reverted to that that really got you through it then yeah definitely i'm not perfect i still had negative thoughts but no i mean yeah, they're, yeah. they're gonna come up yeah. especially when the experience shows yeah. itself but you have to be able to observe that thought and be like. Eh. You have choice. Yeah. We have seniority over our, over our own energy. And it's yeah. like, we have the choice to associate with the thoughts that we want to. And it's like, you know, thoughts come up, they leave, they come up again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
the more you you sit still with them the more you let them pass by the more the the yeah. sky opens up and there's less clouds I love and it. you know that's where you're just calmer you're like you don't let things get to you as quickly i yeah. feel like a, a lot of us tend to just react right away instead of respond there's a difference between reacting and responding reacting is simply just you know letting the experience tell you what to feel instead of like you feeling what you want to feel you're responding to a situation is okay i'm feeling this i get to choose whether or not to act on it or not and and that's my choice and i'm sure you what like a lot of what helped you get through what you went through was that ability to choose whether you know i can associate with these thoughts that could put me down this rabbit hole you know be even more depressed but i'm sure you chose the positive route because of the person you are and the person you at least been with me like always spreading positivity spreading love i knew you were going to get through this stronger than ever because just of the person you are man and yeah so i i, I want to learn a little bit more about kind of you know how did you get through it you know I, i'm sure it wasn't easy like i'm sure there was times where it's as mindful as you are experience gets to a point where it's like damn this is hard you know like especially for that long of a time yeah yeah what well, since we're on this topic and everything you just explained reminds me of i'm gonna butcher this because i don't know the book verbatim yeah. but but eckhart tolle he he would compare thoughts running through your mind to children like children in a classroom raising their hand right yes like he he made a point about you can't let that thought affect you in the same way that you know a child um I don't want to say has no agency, but yeah. you know, they're, they're not, they're sort of rampant. They're, they're not really responsible right. for their actions. Right. And the thought isn't responsible to show up there. It just shows up. Right. Yeah. And I like to see almost emotions that way where it's like, um, emotions are like a classroom of little kids that are raising their hands and anger raises his hand. Yeah. Sadness raises his hand. And until you acknowledge them, they're just going to keep annoying you. Yeah. So it's important to actually acknowledge those feelings. How important was that for you? Like to, to obviously you were going through a ton of emotions. Like, was it, did you really feel them in order to get through kind of like what you were going through? Did you let yourself I, unleash? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially when I was immobile, <laughs> yeah. I had no other, um, it's, I'm not going to say I had no other choice, but I, I, I thought it would, it would be the correct thing to do to acknowledge the emotion and deal with it instead of to just ignore it. Um, because I'm sure, I'm sure in, in, in the text you read is, uh, they, they, because we we read different texts, um, but on the same subject. Um, that, like you just said, if you acknowledge the emotion, you can acknowledge it and it, it'll dissipate. Um, but if you let it exist, and you're trying to pretend it's not there, trying to ignore it. It's, it's sort of just like... Yeah, you, you create a barrier yeah. almost. Like, I almost see it as like your emotions are like a river flowing. Mm -hmm. And like in order for the river to continue to flow, it needs to feel itself. It needs to keep, you know, living. But when we ignore it, we, we just put it all the way back. We're putting a strong barrier in this river and it just stops flowing. Then the, the water rises. Rises and, yeah. you, and then it starts to flood and... It's just like you. You start to flood in emotions, and now you're a lot more reactive to things because you're so, you know, emotionally overwhelmed. 
but it's like you let go you feel those emotions it's so important for us to feel our emotions because i feel like a lot of the majority of our problem is derives from that fact where it's like you know we just think that ignoring them was will solve them and it's like you have yeah. to feel them they're here and each emotion is here for a reason there's no positive emotions and negative emotions it's just they're here to be felt emotions is energy in motion it's what it is everything is energy so when energy flows everything is emotion if you think about it mm -hmm. everything is energy in motion so life is meant to be lived it's meant to be felt so i think like the more you feel those emotions the more you you get through them you get you're more vibrant you're more alive don't you would you agree i'm just so proud of how wise you are <laughs> <laughs> thanks <laughs> but uh pedro i appreciate you being here on this podcast today i think your story is is one to take inspiration for many of us at home whatever you're struggling with just know not only is there people that can be going through worse times than you but you can also get through all of what you're going through if you're mindful and direct your po your, your thoughts to to a positive direction so thank you guys for watching and, and stay tuned for some further episodes i appreciate every one of you guys for staying until the end of this video and if you haven't done so already go ahead and subscribe to the youtube channel leave a like and follow me on Instagram at fade the public underscore pod. I'll see you in the next one.